What's going on, guys and girls? I'm gonna have to hold the camera this time. There's just not enough room, as you can see. Sometimes the angles just won't work, and when we want to get in and actually look at something, it's just gonna be a pain. So I might just have to set the camera down, or maybe even start and stop it, like when I remove this. This video is gonna be for like setting standards and uh, reference for audio generators. And that's going to be an audio generator with a certification and a calibration. That right there contains two real audio generators. That there, you might call that a function generator. It kind of is, but it's not. That is also an audio generator. It's not a DDS or a direct digital synthesis it's they're totally different this is both this is audio generator and it sucks you know I've got only knows how many I've bought in the past two three four five hundred bucks and they're junk you know they, I can't use them for this at least I can't do a video yeah I don't there's never gonna be anything misleading so when I did all the research on that Compared to everything that was newer, there's nothing touches that in many ways. I won't blast the certification and calibration anymore, but it does entail the, the RF generator and its audio, it's too bright, and uh, the audio generators. And we're going to test those out here shortly. Let's see if I can't clean this up a little bit. This might end up being kind of a long video, but as more and more sophisticated radios come in, It's forced me to spend like a, not quite a week, but you can say five days, not 12 hours a day, get a radio done, work on my equipment. But that's necessary. But see, I always have this. I used to build my own, you know, AF generators like in the 80s. Matter of fact, a part of one is on the back of this. It's like about this much longer now. And well, my, wider than my hands. It covers the back of it for all the components that are in there for impedance transformation and frequency response that all works. So while we're, we got that out of the way, we're going to start out with this one right here. And all that needs to be done is to key the mic, that's keyed, as you can see. Now we're going to, like I said, a lot of work has been done. There, was, there isn't room inside of this audio generator, so I had to build onto the back and make the modifications. So when I flip this, what this is going to do, by the way, that one there feeds straight into the back, you know, real BNC plus from 1 ohm to a 600 ohm output. A lot has to be done. Now we're going to turn that generator on. That turns it off. That turns it on. That turns it off. This turns that one on. We'll get to that in a minute. And you can see. We're just going to use this one momentarily. Because we know that what we're looking at, and we'll even get deeper, is this. It's not some opinion or a manufacturer's guarantee a certification or whatever, it's the real McCoy. So here we are. Can we see it? It's 250 hertz. That's the radio in use. And uh, I mean, beat that with a stick, right? Take a good close look at what we got going on here. I intentionally did that because you guys need to get away from the meter and get sucked into a meter constantly unless you have a real bench and something like that meter you're being taken left and right. Nice isn't it? Okay, let's go to 500, let's go to 1k. Yep, that's the slice them and dice them for sure. 
gonna be kind of hard to reach in here like this, but there's not enough room in here for all this stuff to be able to visualize everything. So we're gonna go back to 250. We're gonna take a good close look. Now we're gonna turn this one off. We're gonna come over here, give this one a second to warm up. Amplitude's a little bit different. This isn't a high output of voltage, as we can see here, watch. That's it, it's a beautiful way. We're gonna go deeper into this in a second. This is why I use this versus them cheap DDSs or digital ones. You see that? Nice, isn't it? Okay, now let's, so I can get this off the bench and out of the way, we're gonna connect this. All the transformation's been made, by the way. So, long cable, that's why I need it. I only have so many hands here. And this will kit and modulate it. Take a look at that. See the waveform? See the frequency? Close enough. And amplitude, we'll change amplitude right here. See the distortion? That's not the radio doing that. See all that? We've seen just two others that are real audio generators and one of them with the certification and calibration. So let me, I'll be back. All right, I wanted to get the radio out of the way as you can see. There's not enough room here. To be able to get everything in here logically all right i did call the manufacturer and i did talk to one of their engineers we had a good talk he wanted me to send pictures in a video i might even send this to him but at the same time he wanted me to do a video take pictures send it to him then he was going to put it on his bench with the same settings well the only way that's going to work is if i am at the helm of the bench that's the only way. If I'm not there with this bench, you take it how you want, you know what I mean? So there are adjustments. I went through this hoping to make this thing work, so it wasn't half-assed. The only thing missing is, yes, I did take out a BNC. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing. It's, it's a waste, totally a waste. And you're gonna see here why in a second. I'll go through the steps with you. Here in a second, we gotta go. Let's connect it. We can go to the DC, we can go to 50 ohms. We're gonna go straight in. Transport, transformation's already been made. And we're gonna look at the real McCoy stuff. Okay, we're gonna get the voltage about the same. First off, let's make sure we're on AM and not FM. Some of you guys will see a lot of distortion. Some of you guys will have a hard time seeing it at all. But you just seen it modulated. There we are. We'll go to FM so you can see that. And this is what it really started out like. It was like that or worse. See the distortion? I should plug this in. And now we're going to go to AM and let's get it set about the same. AM 250, see all the voltages. Now let's zoom in. You can see the distortion. It's sharper here and it's just got a weird shape to it. You can see it down there also. That's why the modulated carrier is looking odd. It's just not right. And that's at 250. We can go higher 
And they always look decent when you go higher, but when you go lower, it's really bad. This one was noticeable. Well, I can see it right there, too. It's just not perfect, see it? It's, it's really cool looking through the camera. Sometimes you see shit in the camera. See it? It's just not right. So looking at something and judging it and or critiquing it or whatever you want to call it, I like to use good equipment, not something that's just not going to work right. I can't put my name on it, you know what I mean? Going over here. So let's look at it a little bit closer again. You can see the distortion in it. And we are at almost one cage, you can see. We can adjust the fine up there a little bit. It's pretty touchy. And doing radio work, the digital stuff, it's just not worth it. This one up here, way before I purchased it, a lot of research went into it, the specifications. And there was really nothing that compared to the audio generators in it. You can compare it to a $20,000 Rode Schwartz analog function generator. It's really good stuff. And even this little cheap guy does a good job. We'll get into that in a second. Now that we've seen that distortion, and I'm not going to use this thing. Ain't that just, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Like I said, it was much worse, but there's nothing that's, that's as good as this thing's going gonna, gonna to get. There's no RF noise in here. This is a Faraday cage. This is a real shop. It's not no game with a bunch of meters all over the place and uncalibrated test equipment. No, no, no. So, now that that's there, let me uh, get this out of the way, shut this off. Well, that's, that's a square, mung button, on the on off button on this thing, it's upside down. Power, unplug it, and as you can see, even the, the plug and the, the plug in right here is not crossing any paths, nothing. Everything is taken into consideration, considering it's a plastic case. All right, hold on a second, let me get it on out of here. Unplug, this thing is situated. All right, so now we're going to connect well, we already seen the radio perform okay on both of them so this this here turns this on which in turn reads the voltage output of the audio that's beat on the scope and also runs voltage straight to this when I'm repairing and or the important part, reverse engineering and looking for the bottlenecks, frequency responses, that's how it's derived, calculated, etc. Straight through this one. Now I can use the dual tone of the other one. And we're gonna show that here. That's disconnected. And so we gotta come up here a little bit. Hmm. Maybe I'll just have to turn this camera on too. So you can kind of see what's going on. So we're just gonna, this, this here is directly connected and coupled straight to the back of this. It goes through transformation, because again, this is one ohm output. This goes to 600 ohm. Oh, this is extremely critical. So, for starters, we'll just go to this one first. 
is off. Turn it off. And uh, we'll check this one out. You can go back and forth and view the different waveforms as necessary. We use this one first. Again, that turns it on, as you can see. Turn the voltage down a little bit. As I look in the camera. It almost looks like it's fake, but it's not fake. That little guy's doing that. Now watch. Okay. And we go down pretty low, but you know, like this one goes down to 86, which that's really low for a radio. Really low. But there it is. The flicker is in the camera. I don't see that flicker in my naked eye. It's a beautiful sight right there. So we'll go up to. Well, there's 12. Turn it down a little bit. So it was all modified again to where I can do what I do and, and do it quickly. So there's a 1K. Beautiful sight, isn't it? Let's go all the way up to 5K. I gotta change ranges. This is the range that I modified to where I can go down to like 230, I think it is, up to a little over seven. That's not all necessary, but it is necessary in the tuning of your transceiver. No, radios don't go that high, but you need to be able to go that high to actually do the tune, if that makes any sense. You know, if it just drops off, where does it drop off? What's the bottleneck? And there's 2K. You guys that got the radios are realizing, oh my god, these things kick ass. Well, yeah. Cleaner is meaner. Some people are trying to jump on my bandwagon and try to act like they do this or know this. But if you can't show it, we're going to get to that in a second. It's all total <coughs> shit. You know what I mean? That's 5K. So now we know this thing does some serious work. So I'm going to unplug this one from here and zoom out. There's going to be an IC7300 coming in pretty soon. And I want to be able to accurately test that thing and surpass its, not specifications, but it's, it's good to be able to go past what the radios are capable of. Not slightly to what they're capable of or less. It's good to be able to go way past. Same for receive. We'll get into that later. All right, so now we're going to disconnect this that plugs into the back. I don't have a port, and I probably won't. I have room for one more port in the back to be able to do this like I showed. You know, I could do the reference, but I don't need reference from this. From that, it's it's NIST certi certified. It's the good stuff. So this is what plugs into the back of that. We're going to remove this and plug this straight in. Plus, you know, plugging into this constantly and then unplugging it. I don't like doing that. It slows me down. Now the keying and unkeying is all done. All the transitions are through here. Like. 
If you notice people always changing their test equipment, it's because they blew it up is what they did. Keying into the wrong circuit and or mode. Then they have to send it off, get it recalibrated, or they just don't show it anymore. And if it's not right in front of them, you can guarantee they don't tune anything. It's just show and tell. Just show, you know, like Barnum and Bailey type of crap. So now let's go to, we started up 250 before. Now we're just gonna go straight to 5K. Probably have to turn the voltage up a little bit. To be equal. Now this is on that, wherever it is, you know what I'm talking about. It's hard to really get in there any better, but if you look at that in comparison to the BNK, or like a DDS, the digital style with a phase shift, there's a phase shift that they all go through. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. I haven't seen one that I like yet. Maybe a Roden Schwartz for 20 grand. Okay, there's 5K. Now let's go to 4K, 3K. You see me up here. Well, you can't see me, but I'm up here. There you are. Right there. I'll go to 2K. Turn this back down. Oh, this one here. And again, that's why we use these, the analog scopes. I would use the radio work, I would never be using that digital stuff. Nope. See it? Now we'll, we'll just start turning it down. I can set the decimal, etc., to where I want it. Okay, that's zero. That's 60 hertz. It's gonna flicker on the scope. Let's see if we get it in there. Super badass, ain't it? Well, people that do this type of work said yeah it is and it is it's good stuff right, let's see 60 hertz let's go down to like 100 millivolt Focus. Alright, that's channel one. At 600. We're going to go to. No, that was 60 hertz. I'm sorry. We're going to go to 700. Now we're going to take. Second channel. Got to try to hold this thing and do this. And go to 1.9. You see everything. Knowing it's this, take a look at it. I think I've shown that before in the past. It's somewhere on my uh, Facebook page. People are like, what's that? It's a dual tone. The real McCoy, the real deal. Ain't that cool? 
All right, so now that we know all this stuff is all legitimate, it's all the right stuff. Now let's see. Uh, that's there. Now let's come on over here like this. Plug this back in. Well, no, I can't key it though. This this is something else. I wish I could do that. I'm just sitting here thinking. No, I, I can't go direct into it that way. Only with a radio. All right, so now we know what everything is and how just a tiny, tiny bit of distortion distorts the waveform drastically and causes harmonics. I was kind of reluctant at one point in time to put this up because most people, I, I see these videos, they have no clue or idea what they're looking at. They don't know if it's their radio, their tone generator, the amplifier, their bench, their impedance, etc. So now you'll learn a little bit more. I gotta get back to work. That took a long time, by the way, to make all these impedances match frequency response and just be able to use this thing easily and be able to do videos and comparisons. All right, stay tuned in. I hope you got something out of this. It's hard drive. 163, Mud Duck Radio Station in the Desert. We're moving on, click, click.